Earlier, we have seen that drugs are distributed into tissues and organs based on the amount of blood flow it receives. Accordingly, tissues were grouped into vessel rich, muscle group, and vessel poor group. Now, we will look into the compartment model which uses the same concept to divide the body into compartments or hypothetical spaces. The compartment module assumes that the drug distributes uniformly within each compartment. However, the compartments does not need to correspond to any specific anatomical space within our body. We have single compartment model where we assume our body as one big container where the drug distributes uniformly. Then there is two compartment model where the body is divided into central and peripheral compartments. Finally, the multi-compartment model assumes that there are more than two compartments that is central, rapidly equilibrating and slowly equilibrating peripheral compartments. We will look into them one by one. The one compartment model is the simplest way to describe drug distribution and elimination in the body. This model assumes that all the tissues in the body are contained in a single compartment. This is just an approximation and doesn't account for delays caused by blood flow, protein binding or tissue barriers we have discussed earlier. Once the drug enters the body, it is instantly and evenly distributed in this compartment, also called central compartment. This one and only compartment is the volume into which the drug distributes in one compartment model. Now let's try an outline to understand one compartment model more clearly. The one compartment model or any other compartment model begins with drug administration. For anesthesia, it's usually a bolus administration or infusion. In one compartment model, the administered drug distributes instantly and uniformly throughout the body after administration. The body is treated as a single homogeneous compartment, meaning that the drug concentration is the same throughout all the tissues and fluids at any given time. The compartment, in other words, represents the volume of distribution. Finally, the drug leaves the body at a constant rate, typically through the process of metabolism or excretion. This elimination follows first-order kinetics, meaning the rate of elimination is proportional to the drug's concentration in the compartment. Now, what is this first-order kinetics? With first order elimination or kinetics, a constant proportion or a fraction of drug is metabolized per unit time. The plasma drug concentration reduces by the same percentage from the total concentration at one particular time as elimination begins. Let's say there are 16 drug molecules before the start of drug elimination. Due to the constant rate of elimination, there will be 50% reduction in plasma concentration at a regular intervals. If we look at the time for plasma concentration to reduce by half, which is the half-life of a drug, we can appreciate the exponential decay of plasma concentration. The first 50% reduction in drug concentration is the first half-life of the drug. So in this example, the drug molecule reduces by 16 to 8. As elimination continues, the remaining concentration is reduced by another 50%, resulting in 25% of original concentration. The remaining concentration is then again reduced by another 50%, resulting in only 12.5% of the original concentration, and it keeps going until it is fully eliminated. Please spend some time carefully studying this graph. But why does this first order elimination happen? The first order elimination occurs when the drug concentration is low and the metabolic enzymes or elimination pathways like liver and kidneys are not fully saturated. The rate of elimination is proportional to the drug concentration because the system can process more drugs as the concentration increases. For example, 
Doubling the drug concentration doubles the elimination rate or halving the concentration halves the elimination rate as given in the graph. In contrast to the first order kinetics, we also have zero order kinetics that occur when the drug concentration is so high that the elimination system becomes saturated. Enzymes, transporters or other processes responsible for drug metabolism or excretion are working at their maximum capacity and cannot increase their rate, no matter how much drug is present. So, the system eliminates a fixed amount of drug per unit time, leading to a fixed amount of drug elimination rate rather than constant proportion. The elimination rate does not depend on the drug concentration making the relationship between the dose and drug level non-linear. Drugs like phenytoin, alcohol and high doses of aspirin follow zero-order kinetics at therapeutic or higher concentration. Alright, let's consider an example where a drug dose of 1 gram is injected into 1 liter of compartment. In one compartment model, the drug is assumed to distribute evenly and undergo first order elimination. Graphically, we would get a concentration time graph like this one. The volume of distribution represents the size of the compartment into which the drug distributes. Since the compartment is 1 liter and the drug dose is directly injected into it, it the initial concentration of the drug is simply the dose divided by the volume. So, in this case, 1 gram per liter of drug is confined to this one single liter of body fluid. The elimination rate constant K quantifies the proportion of the drug eliminated per unit time. Suppose K is 0.5 per minute, meaning 50% of the drug is removed every minute. So, at time 0, the concentration is 1 gram per liter. After 1 minute, it becomes 0.5 gram per liter and after 2 minutes, only 0.25 gram per liter of the drug remains in the plasma. This exponential decline is characteristics of first order elimination. There are whole drug classes for which pharmacokinetics are well predicted by a single compartment model. For example, highly hydrophilic drugs which are confined to body water usually have single compartment pharmacokinetics. Aminoglycosides are an excellent example of drugs that follow one compartment model. They have barely any tissue penetration and are essentially confined to the intravascular fluid volume or blood plasma. However, for drugs that are highly distributed throughout the body like anesthetics, a more complex model may be necessary, so let's dive into two compartment model. Two compartment models improve open one compartment models by incorporating drug distribution between two distinct areas, the central compartment and the peripheral compartment. This separation accounts for the distribution process that a one compartment model cannot capture. After drug administration, the drug is assumed to be immediately taken up by the central compartment representing plasma and highly perfused tissues like kidneys, brain and liver. Later, the drug then distributes from the central compartment to peripheral compartment representing muscle, skin and fat. Now, let's draw two compartment model. Just like one compartment model, the two compartment model begins with administration of drug into the central compartment. After the drug administration, the drug concentration in the central compartment decreases rapidly as it distributes into the peripheral compartment. This is called distribution phase which accounts for the initial rapid decline in serum drug concentration. It is denoted by K12. The same process causes the concentration of drug in the peripheral compartment to rise. The distribution phases occur until the drug concentration in the central and the peripheral compartment is equal. Once the equilibrium is established between the two compartments, the drug is eliminated primarily from the central compartment via metabolism or excretion. 
This phase is slower and also follows first order kinetics. It is denoted by K10 in the diagram. During this time, as the drug is eliminated from the central compartment, the drug from the peripheral compartment moves back into the central compartment to maintain equilibrium. This redistribution is denoted by K21. So, in two compartment model, the decline in plasma drug concentration occurs in two phases. The first is the distribution phase characterized by an initial rapid decline in serum drug concentration with subsequent rise in drug concentration in the peripheral compartment. And the other phase is the elimination phase marked by the slower decline sustained by the redistribution of the drug from the peripheral tissue stores. In other words, in two compartment model, there are effectively two half-lives, distribution half-life and elimination half-life. Distribution half-life represents the time it takes for the drug concentration in the central compartment to decrease by half during the initial rapid distribution phase. Elimination half-life is the time taken for the total drug concentration in the body to decrease by half during the slower elimination phase after distribution equilibrium have been achieved. These two phases have clinical implications. For example, a highly lipophilic drug is easily distributed from the bloodstream and stored in the body fats. Such drugs initially exhibit a short half-life during distribution phase but a much longer half-life during elimination phase due to the slow release from the fat stores in the peripheral compartment. The three compartment model include another peripheral compartment in addition to the two compartments we have discussed. The first peripheral compartment represents the highly perfused tissues like muscles and the second peripheral compartment represents the scarcely perfused tissues like fat. These two compartments are also called rapidly equilibrating and slowly equilibrating compartments. The drug elimination, distribution and redistribution follows the same logic we discussed in one compartment and two compartment model. Like the single and two compartment model, the drug is assumed to be immediately spread into a central compartment. With distribution, the drug first distributes into the vessel-rich muscle compartment. The drug then spreads to the fat compartment until the plasma concentration of drug equilibrates with the fat compartment concentration. The changes in plasma drug concentration in three compartment model can be explained in three phases. These are distribution, elimination and terminal phase. Consider a highly fat soluble drug. After administration, the drug begins to distribute rapidly throughout the body including into the lean muscle and fat tissues. Hence, the plasma concentration of the drug reduces rapidly. At the same time, the distribution of drug leads to peaking of drug concentration in the two peripheral compartments. Lean muscle, which has a little fat, is not a significant storage reservoir for the drug. So, it reaches its peak concentration quickly. The fat compartment, however, absorbs a large amount of drug acting as a significant storage site. Once the distribution phase concludes, the drug enters what is often referred to as elimination phase. During this phase, the drug is cleared from the blood and muscle compartment. But the fat tissue continues to store significant amount of the drug. The elimination phase transitions into terminal phase when the drug concentration in the fat compartment exceeds the concentration in the blood. At this point, the fat tissues begin to release drug back into the bloodstream. This redistribution of drug from the fat compartment slows the overall clearance of drugs from the central and the muscle compartment. Whole body physiologically based pharmacokinetic modeling is a detailed approach to pharmacokinetics that represents the body using multiple interconnected compartments that 
correspond to actual physiological structures such as organs and tissues. Physiologically based pharmacokinetic models use physiological parameters like blood flow rates, tissue volumes and organ specific enzyme activities often derived from anatomical and physiological data.